Now let's move on to hint nine. So we want to call calculate score at some point in our code. And if the computer or the user has a blackjack, or if the user's score is over 21, then the game is going to end. This might be a good time to start tidying up our code a little bit, because we've got our function over here, the calculate score function. And remember that you can only call a function after it's been declared. So for example, if I wanted to call this function over here, then I actually can't. I can't say calculate score because it hasn't yet been declared. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this function and I'm going to move it to where we dealt our cards. And I'm going to collapse some of these functions so I can see my hints and my code a little bit easier. So now that I've moved my function to above the line where I want to call it, it's now become valid code. And this is the place where I want to call it because it's only after I've dealt the user and the computer some cards can I actually calculate their scores. Firstly, I want to calculate the score using the user's cards. So this list of cards from the user gets passed into this function and uses all of the logic to output some sort of score. And then I'm going to store that score in a variable, which I'll call user score. And I'm going to do the same thing for the computer. So computer score equals calculate score. And remember, it's always helpful to add a little bit of a doc string to tell ourselves and other programmers what this function does. Let's quickly summarize it. So this function is going to take a list of cards and return the score calculated from the cards. So now when I open that parentheses, I know that I probably have to pass in my list of cards in order to get back the score. So let's put in the computer cards in as the input. And now we've got the user score and the computer score. So this score could equal zero if they got a blackjack, or it could just simply be the value of the cards that they hold all added up together. Now that we've called calculate score, we also want to make sure that if the computer or the user has a blackjack, or if the user score is over 21, then we have to end the game. Let's write our if statements. If the user score is equal to zero, or the computer score is equal to zero, or the user score is greater than 21, then in this case, we're going to tell the game to end. So we could create a new variable called is game over. And we start out with false, of course. But then when this happens, we're going to change that variable to true instead. Our is game over variable is just a simple Boolean. It starts out as false. And when certain conditions are met, then we change it to true. Now, at the moment, our program is not finished. So it's not really obvious how we're going to be using this is game over variable. But we're setting ourselves up for the next steps. Now that we're tracking if the game should end, we can look at this value to determine what to do next. So that's hint nine completed. Let's test our code and see how everything works so far. I'm going to add some print statements here so that I can see what the user's cards are and what the user's score is. Using an F string, I'm going to show your cards, so the user's cards, and the current score. And I'm also going to print the computer's first card. Remember when I first explained the rules of Blackjack, the dealer will reveal their first card. So you get a little bit of a clue as to what kind of hand they might have. So in here, we're going to insert the computer's cards and we're only going to pick out the first item. So the one at index zero, and we do that using a square bracket after the name of the list. Now let's give our program a run and see if it actually works. The first thing that prints is a list of our cards. So in our hand, we have a two and we have a six and two plus six added together, of course, makes the score of eight. And then it reveals to us the computer's first card, which is a 10. Now we can be reasonably assured that our code is working. 
And it's a good idea to regularly test your code so that you don't wait until the end when there are a lot of problems and you don't know which part of the code is responsible.